The Nigerian government continues to seek ways to get out of the current economic downturn as it launches a new national slogan tagged Change Begins With Me. Many observers are questioning how suitable is the change slogan in this present polity. Would a change slogan find answers to the current economic downturn in this country? Does the average Nigerian have the capacity to deliver on the change mantra? Is the federal government not passing the buck of this responsibility of leading the change agenda to deliver on its campaign promises? These are many unanswered questions begging for answers. It's question time. Welcome to the program. I'm Benga Ashiru. You can also join in this conversation by sending us a comment on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. As the federal government begins to chart a new national curse with a change slogan, we decided to set the record straight on the essence of the change agenda. We caught up with the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Muhammad. Join us in this exclusive interview. Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, thank you for joining us on this episode of Question Time. Thank you, Benga. Now let's look at the national slogan that was launched recently, Change Begins With Me. Could you tell us the significance of this slogan? Well, it's a national campaign meant to persuade Nigerians to go back to our basic values of honesty, integrity, industry, and patriotism. It's actually aimed at persuading people to look inwards and appreciate the fact that that change that they're asking for will not come about until each and every one of us changes the way we think, we do things, or we behave. So it's basically about attitudinal change, behavioral change. After voting in this administration into power, will this not amount to passing the buck back to Nigerians in terms of the change responsibility? Now, I think it's because people have a rather, uh, uh, rather insufficient understanding of this Change Begins With Me campaign. Change Begins With Me campaign is a campaign which is led by the leadership. It is a campaign which, ought to, which, we, should, which we percolate to every strata of society. The fact that you were given just 20 minutes demonstration, of course, robbed us the opportunity of showing the whole world the full span of the campaign. But really, the campaign is led by the leadership, by, by uh, op opinion molders, influencers, and the general people. Basically, what Jim begins with me is that Mr. President, the ministers, the permanent secretaries, the directors must live by example. Change begins with them. And I see even some of the, uh, 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 um, the, the samples we showed, showed the civil servant saying, this is the new face of the civil service. Change begins with me. I will get to work early, I will be diligent at my duty. But it's wrong to focus this change only on leadership. Everybody in society is important if we are going to have a turnaround society. The downfall driver that takes Paraga every morning before he gets behind the steering wheel must change his attitude. The patent medicine seller who sells fake drugs must change his attitude. But people feel that once the country, once the government comes with a vibrant policy and there is a strong political will and once they've gotten it right from the top that the people will naturally follow. Yeah, I agree with you, Benga, and that is why we are launching this campaign. If only past administrations had thought it fit to launch this kind of campaign, I'm sure the humongous figures that are being revealed every day to be lodged in 
various persons' accounts wouldn't, 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 wouldn't have occurred. And this leads me to an issue. People are saying, this is the wrong time to launch this campaign. And I say, that's incorrect. Because if people don't change their attitudes, even in time of prosperity, it will lead us to adversity again. So yes, I agree with you, Benga, that if we have this kind of policy in place before, probably we will not be where we are today. From the government rhetorics down to what you're saying now, it seems there's so much uncertainty regarding the economic fortunes of the country. Is the government overwhelmed with these responsibilities and challenges? On the contrary, there's no government that I remember that is as focused as this. Given the humongous nature of the problem, problems we inherited, it takes a disciplined and focused administration to actually you know, uh, uh, to, 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 to actually maintain the balance. You see, they keep telling us, we don't want to hear about the past. The past is very important, and we, we must remind them, because the, the, it's the past that has led us to the present. But the important thing is that we're not just folding our arms and saying, no, oh, because they have wrecked the economy, therefore we will be given you know, excuses, uh, excuses. No, we put in place measures that have stopped the bleeding. And this is what Nigerians have failed to realize. Or, I mean, of course, many people do, many, many people who are genuine do understand this. Now, we've introduced the Treasury single account. But for that, but for that fact today, we'll be unable even to pay salaries. We've introduced physical discipline into the management of the public finances. We've cut down uh, 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 wages from 165 billion a month to about 159 billion a month. We've weeded out about 33,000 ghost workers. We've cut down on irrelevances. Last year, the federal government spent 18 billion naira on roads and 65 billion naira on travels and estacos. This year alone, we spent about 70 billion naira on roads. The difference is clear. So it's not about rhetoric, it's about we are facing reality and we are grappling with it in the best manner we know. Now, how would you react to the comment trending on social media that this administration probably had only one ambition to sack the PDP from power and they had no clear cut governance agenda for the nation? Well, you see, um, comments are free. Um, we came in with very clear idea on how to salvage the economy. We actually came in here to rescue the economy, to rescue Nigeria. And every of our policies, either physical policy, or security, policy on security, fighting corruption, We've been clearly, clearly focused. Nigerians forget very easily. But by 29th of May 2015, 20 out of 20, sorry, yes, 14 out of 20 local governments in Borno State was under the sovereign authority of the Boko Haram. They've forgotten that before 29th of May this year, the Boko Haram could just choose any target it wants in Nigeria. Within the last 15 months, we've succeeded in not just decapitating them, but we have completely won the war against insurgency. You can also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time, how does the national slogan address the current economic recession in the country? Find out from the Minister of Information and Culture.